Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I want to position a satellite in a Molnia orbit around Kerbin slash Earth and to position a satellite in a Tundra orbit as well. And the reason for this is to gather funds. These are very lucrative contracts and they just have a basic uh, satellite except this one in the Molnia orbit carries a thermometer. I'll probably put a thermometer on both just so I don't forget it. But yeah, very lucrative. We're talking about probably two mil uh, more than 2 million funds altogether once we get it done. And it'll be costing probably about 30,000 funds. So very little cost, very big reward. And we'll need that in order to unlock some of the parts I want to use for the moon mission. Speaking of the moon mission, and we talk about landing a Kerbal on the moon, we got the plant a flag on the moon contract. So uh, let's pick this up as well. It, it actually is way too cheap. Uh, in other words, I don't think I could do it for just 120,000 funds. But we'll pick it up and we'll build up a, a store of funds in order to do that mission. And I'm sure we'll have enough. But let me just uh, point out which parts I'm talking about that I am looking to unlock. So just a heads up, I've built the rocket that I intend to use to send the satellites up. This is the rocket. It's uh, only uh, 19,000 funds, so it's got two solid rocket boosters here. Uh, once again, using the uh, H1, I think, oh, we're in the RS-27 configuration, so very close to being a Delta rocket. Uh, this is one of my favorite configurations with an RS-27 there, and then the RL-10 here, instead of the AJ-10, which is what the Delta II uses. So, uh, yeah, very common configuration for me, and then two stages with MMH and 204 burning engines, one kilonewton thrusters. But anyway, what I want to unlock is the Apollo Command Module, and that'll be 350,000. I don't think I need the Lunar Module. It's fairly heavy, and I don't think that my 1 kilonewton thrusters can get it off the moon. Uh, not, not on the rockets I intend to use. And we still don't have the Lunar Module engines anywhere. So uh, I can't put those on. If I had the Lunar Module engines, it'd be a lot easier. But I'm relying on 1 kilonewton thrusters to get the lunar lander off of the moon, so I can't use such a heavy pod. But if I unlock the Apollo Command Module, I also have to get the Launch Escape Assembly, for instance, the uh, forward heat shield, the actual heat shield, the main parachutes, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I don't know if this docking system is the one I'll use, or uh, we've got the docking mechanism Drogue. I'll have to get the the other end of that if I want to use that. I don't have the other end of that here. Uh, the Because this is the part that goes on the lander and we'll need the part that goes on the command module which I don't see here. So yeah we've got those sorts of complications and I need to unlock all of that in order to do the moon mission. Our lunar rocket, the one that did the lunar sample mission, is half the size of the Saturn V and so logically speaking, uh, if I'm going to do two launches, which is why I intend to do, I should be sending a number of Kerbals equal to what the Saturn V launched, right? So uh, one launch will carry the lunar lander, and that lunar lander will have to be able to carry two Kerbals. And I'm going to use these lander cans. It's not going to look great, but it'll look all right. So two of these lander cans stacked on top of each other, and that will get the Kerbals on the moon and that will be a combined mass of 1.2 tons compared to the lunar module's 4.6 tons. The lunar module does have uh, space for fuel and all so that's a little bit different but well so does this. Yeah there's really no benefit to using the lunar module ascent module I don't think. Yeah the lander can should handle it. Uh, so that's a better way to go. And then another launch carrying the command module to bring them back home and that will of course have a crew capacity of 3 and they'll actually all go on the command module, rendezvous with the lunar lander around the moon, and then do the landing, and then come back to the command module, and then head back home. So that's the plan, and I just wanted a little bit more funding in order to support that. So this is the rocket that we have to launch, but let's take a look at the timing a bit. So here's my jumble around the Earth. You can see that we've already done satellite contracts, obviously, uh, in all sorts of orbits, but... Um, this purple orbit is the Molnia orbit. You can tell by an apoapsis of 40,000 kilometers or so. And then the, uh, the orange-brown orbit is the Tundra orbit. Uh, you can see that they're both uh, sort of servicing the South Pole for some reason. Uh, so this is not... These wouldn't be helpful to, say, 
you know, Russia. Russia would have them uh, have their peaks up north, uh, similar to this one or that one. Well, that one in particular. That one would service Russia just fine. Uh, but uh, yeah, these are sort of more for like Australia. So maybe we should launch from Australia for the first time ever. Yeah, we don't have any station in South Africa, but we do have Wumira. I think that's pronounced Wumira. Um, in Australia. And so yeah, I guess I'll switch launch site to there. Um, looks like uh, it'll hit these orbits over here. So I'm gonna time warp till it comes around to this point. Oh, we could, well, it's not really, maybe, maybe we can do one launch from, uh, from South America at Kuru there. Because I guess this would be good to cover South America, maybe for communication or internet access or whatever. But we'll do Australia first. And I'll do the easier one first because we're testing this rocket to make sure it works out. Okay, well, that's getting pretty close. We can adjust later. Okay, let's take the rocket out to the launch pad. And I have no idea what the launch asthma thought to be. Um, can we get a... Well, let's take it out to the launch pad and then I can see the latitude at least. Okay, so here we are at Wimira. And my first launch from here. It looks like the inclination is 30 degrees point... 957. Uh, doing the math, I should be heading for 149. Uh, the actual math gives me 31, but that'd be if we were heading north uh, for 63.4 uh, degrees. And so it's uh, 149 because you subtract 31 from 180. So that's my intended direction, my heading, my launch azimuth. First launch with this rocket, so a little bit nerve-wracking. Hopefully there aren't any populated areas downrange from Wumira. It is a test range, so at least our boosters should fall within the test range area. Okay, we're already oriented sort of interestingly. The pad doesn't orient uh, just straight east or anything. But anyway, here we go. Ignition of the RS-27s, uh, the RS-27 and its verniers. And we go. So, programming in 149. We're clear of the tower, so let's go with that roll program. Okay, there we go, 149. And let's begin. This guy's got a lot of thrust, so I have to do the whole thing reasonably quickly, I think. So, we don't want to go too high. But we need to get into orbit first. You can see where we are isn't really at the periapsis or apoapsis of the orbit. So we're sort of right in the middle of the orbit and so we have to get into a low orbit first before boosting out. Really the natural launch location for this orbit would be in Russia or at least in the northern hemisphere where the periapsis is. Okay, decouplers are overheating. That's typical, right? We've seen that a lot before. And we'll be releasing in two seconds, one second. Okay, off they go. Alright, separation is clean and the RS-27 continues to push us forward. Hmm, uh, attitude control is a little bit lacking right now. Dipping all the way to 35 degrees, even though I set to a uh, pitch of 40. Sounds like the SRBs crashed into each other or something. Alright, let's keep this nice and restrained here. Time to apoapsis. It's creeping up there. I think we can release the fairings now. And they clear. Alright. So that's our little pretty standard satellite there. Gotta extend the Commutron 16s. They're angled so they don't hit anything, so that's good. Pretty high G forces at the end of this stage. Certainly not a Kerbal rated or human rated rocket here. Okay, set. 
and ignition. Okay, there we have the ignition of the RL-10. We've also got LH rockets to relight it, which will probably be necessary. We won't use all the fuel on this burn. We'll have some spare. We're outside of the atmosphere, so I'll extend solar panels, and I've got a lot of extra solar power so that uh, we won't run out. Uh, the, the fuse box, as usual, doesn't take into account the power needed for the antenna. So even though it looks stable here, that's less than necessary, but we're going to drop the Agena stage, so that'll make up for it. I'm going to set target to active vessel and activate in this case. Um, this is our most powerful antenna available. I couldn't get a better antenna. We could have used a better antenna if we wanted to aim it at, for instance, Jupiter. would have been a thing, but we just don't have anything that powerful available. So. This is the best I could do. Hmm, looking at it, I do believe we are flying over populated areas of Australia. Sorry, Australians, uh, bad planning on my part. There's the southeastern coast of Australia here. All right, we have passed apoapsis and we are still proceeding. Our inclination is tending in the right direction, longitude ascending node continuing in the right direction. And, uh, yep, well, I'm aiming for a periapsis of about a hundred and a little bit over 130 because our target periapsis is 136.5. So, uh, whether it'll be in the correct place is a tough thing to say. We, we're, we're almost on the opposite side of the periapsis, but not quite. The opposite side of the periapsis is pretty much, uh, Antarctica. So we're a little bit of a ways from there. Gotta worry a little bit about communication. You can see it's pretty stretched here, but we've got a satellite out here helping out. So that's alright. Okay, here we go. Getting ready to uh, cut it off. The inclination is looking very, very good. Uh, we'll probably end up within 0.1 degrees of that. Uh, longitude of ascending node a little bit further off, but uh, better than some of the other launches I've done to a specific inclination and longitude of ascending node, so not bad. The periapsis is probably going to end up on this side, darn it. Oh, we're more than point 0.1 off on the inclination. Okay, well, 135, and so it's probably off. Periapsis is all the way over there. Apple Apsis is on the wrong side. I will boost out first and then we'll correct the periapsis after boosting out. It's safer that way anyway. Okay, here we are on the opposite side. Sunrise is over there. And, uh, yep, we can sell the fuel down and start soon. Let me ch double check the burn time for the next stage here. Nine minutes. And that's just about enough to cover the burn in question. So we should start about now. All right, all these rockets and light. So our periapsis will end up being around 460 instead of 130, 135, and we'll have to bring it down at apoapsis. This is not the right place to fix inclination. Longitude of ascending node is about a degree off. We could fix that, but I think it'll be with intolerances. Okay, one kilonewton thrusters. Okay, getting ready for a cutoff here. We're at 32,000 kilometers and increasing. We're looking for 40,244. Okay, 40,347 uh, RCS, please. Something just fluttered over here. But uh, that's that's pretty darn close, uh, 40,244. All right, so that's a start. Uh, we should have enough power to uh, bring the Gino with us all the way to Apoapsis to adjust this. We're a bit off on longitude of ascending node, about one degree. Uh, yeah, less than one degree off. Um, our Apoapsis isn't where I intended to have it which is probably because of our burn location. But anyway, uh, let us 
head out there. Now, I want the Genus Stage to uh, actually descend into the atmosphere. I want to dump it. So we're going to actually have our periapsis go uh, suborbital before we actually get this to the proper location. There we go, suborbital for the Agena stage, and we'll let it go now. Uh oh. Uh, oh no, we, we can switch. There we go. Oh oh. Ah. Uh, hey. Let me insufficient avionics. This thing has avionics. This thing has plenty of avionics. Ah. Uh. Ah, we're at point seven o one, and it carries point seven. Ah, uh, we're point o o one more than we should be. That sucks. How did how did that happen? I must have accidentally slapped an extra antenna on somehow. I think I might have duplicated more than these than were originally on here. Crud. Okay, well, we're definitely not in the right orbit now. These things are both going to go down for the count. Wow, quite a robust destruction there. Of course, it, uh, it unlocked avionics briefly as the thing disintegrated, but uh, anyway. Back to Space Center. Okay, so let's verify this. I pull this off. Uh, 0 0.702 tons, it says. So, let's check. You see, I've tuned down the utilization of this tank in order to reduce the mass. So, I'm just going to tune it down. Let's go to 43, just for a little bit of buffer. And we will try this again. Now, it occurred to me that we can do both satellites on the same launch I think I think we could probably get into the Molnia orbit and then boost up into the Tundra orbit they're not very far off from each other so yeah I think I'll try that and that'll save us the extra launch and the extra time so okay uh, let me make sure that we're at the right place I uh, will we'll launch from uh, I don't like going over the populated areas of Australia. Maybe we should launch from Tanagashima, Japan, which should be clear on that side of it. Yeah, I think that would be an option. Let me t take a look at the map first. So yeah, I think if we went south from Kuru, we'd also be hitting populated areas. And obviously we had the same problem from Wumira. Um, so yeah, those are not particularly good places. And Tanegashima is a legit uh, launch site, so south from there is like the Pacific Ocean, so it should be fine. So let's get it over to this location. Okay, here we go. It's a somewhat interesting launch site because of the hills. Very scenic and all. Uh, so let me recalculate. Oh, it, the inclination looks pretty similar to where it was before, but let me just recalculate to double check. Yeah, 31 degrees, so 149 should work from here as well. Very convenient. Okay, so SAS on, throttle up, uh, made ignition, and launch. Roll program. Sure hope that launch azimuth goes down, not launch azimuth, I keep saying that. Longitude of ascending node goes down quickly. We're trying to aim 83. Yep, looking very good. Oh, it's, it's, it's actually, those aren't really hills. I, I guess they don't really have hills there. It's actually the indentation because of the flattening produced by the KSC. Totally accidental there. Okay, three seconds to booster set. Okay, set. And the boosters are away and clear. 
Okay, fairing set. Uh oh. Press spacebar and nothing happens. Uh, let's try that again. Alright. Let's get the antennae out. Okay. Okay, set. And ignition. Alright, RL10 looks good. And we are proceeding. Inclination looks a bit off. Longitude of ascending node about uh, two degrees off now. So we're actually closer on the longitude of ascending node than we are on the inclination. Should end up right on the inclination though, because that was the thing I calculated for. Longitude of ascending node, I just eyeballed it. So, anyway, we'll see. Okay, we are once again past our apoapsis, continuing to burn here. Maintaining 15 degrees of pitch. It looks like we're going to end up a little bit off on the inclination. Longitude of ascending node is about one and a half degrees off, which is more than last time as well. So that's a little bit disconcerting. Okay, here we go again. Let's flatten out. It looks like I, I've held it at around apoapsis a little bit better this, this time. So... Not really getting the inclination right though. We're actually going down now, but I want to fix that right now as I'm about to turn off the engine. Okay, so 151 by 261. And we will aim to relight this engine. Let's take a look at our situation here. Again, better to do the inclination fix further out anyway. Okay, here we go. First burn to Molnia orbit. Settling the fuel down. And lighting the RL-10. Okay, that's the engine out set. And one kilonewton thrusters. Alright, preparing to shut down here for this burn. I've tried to uh, get the inclination on the right side and longitude of ascending node on the right side. Not the right place to correct them. I've also been diminishing our periapsis as we burn here. Just trying to get things in line. Okay, uh, 4.24, it should be 0.244. Maybe we can use a little bit of RCS. Uh, okay, there we go. Alright, uh, so now we've got some possibilities. Probably what we want to do is tilt it around here. Is that the... Uh... Yeah, I think that's the right place to get the inclination right. Well, it's costly, but uh, we've got the delta V. Okay, that should be close enough on everything, but let me... adjust my apoapsis at least. Okay. Alright, on to apoapsis, and then we, we've we got a pretty good longitude of ascending node here. Let's see, not a tundra orbit, where is my Munia orbit? Okay, so let's just go through the numbers. Uh, 4244, pretty darn close. Periapsis is what we need to correct. Inclination, we're 0.07 off. And on longitude of ascending node, we're only 2 minutes off. It should be 83 degrees and 12 minutes. So, okay, that's pretty good. Let's go to apoapsis and correct that periapsis, and I think we'll be all set for this orbit. Then we have to switch to tundra orbit. Shouldn't even take the main thrusters. We could probably use the RCS to correct this. Oh, I think we got it. Yep, we've got the Molnia orbit one. 
Okay, so next up, Tundra Orbit. Let's see. Uh, the Periapsis seems about the same, so we'll just go around to Periapsis first and then boost up. And then we'll make the rest of the adjustments. The inclination is the same. It's the longitude of ascending node we have to change. I believe we can change that at Periapsis. Maybe we should change that here. Let me see. Um, so we need to get to that orbit. All right, it's in this direction. So let me just tell Smart ASS to point there, and then we'll start burning. Okay, here we go. So we're aiming for 92.7, 92 degrees and 42 minutes then. All right, that's the correct longitude of ascending node. That's technically suborbital in realism overhaul. And we've only got four meters per second left in this stage. All right, let's try this again. Let's uh, separate. Okay, that's positive. All right, so we're free from that and we still have control. Excellent. Okay, so let's make a few corrections, shall we? Prograde me, please. We need to boost that periapsis to this one wanted 136.5. Okay, that should be close enough. We might need an inclination change to get it down by 0.5 degrees, but let's boost our apoapsis first. And we'll do that at periapsis, of course. Good thing we have other satellites overhead, otherwise we wouldn't have line of sight to uh, mission control getting this low. Actually, there's a mission control pretty close to where we are burning. Hmm. Uh, that seems to be in Alaska. I think. Okay, prograde please. And we're pretty close to periapsis. We need 71449. Here we go. Okay, getting ready to shut down here. Plenty of fuel left. Um, looks like we reached a designated tundra orbit says so. Maintain stability is all we need to do. Okay, we have fulfilled this contract as well. So we fulfilled both satellite contracts with the same satellite. Shh, don't tell them. Uh, <laughs> basically, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they really ought to write something to prevent this. Uh, I, It's just not kosher. But the, anyway, we'll leave it be... Uh, and uh, it was quite a, I don't know how these particular contracts work and why they're so lucrative. I mean, uh, it costed uh, 20,000 funds in order to launch this. And uh, we got 2 million back, I believe. Yep, we've got 2 million back for it. So, yep, I think we're uh, good to go on a lunar landing mission. So next time I hope to bring you the landing of a Kerbal on the moon. Or at least uh, we'll, we'll get, uh, get uh, partway through it. I don't know how long it's going to take to discuss everything and get things going but we'll see all right so that is the plan and i'll say thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time